Hello guys, Virtus Education here with the 10th video of the Unreal Development Kit Beginner Series, I think. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to be going over how to place static meshes. And in the next video, I'm actually going to be showing you how to import your own static meshes into into UDK. So in this video, I will be showing you how to place in um, static meshes which come with UDK inside of the uh, content browser. Keep in mind, you aren't necessarily going to be limited by this. As I said, you will be importing your own. And also, the ones that come inside of UDK are generally going to be rather modular and they can be reused. So, as you can see in my scene right now, I have made quite a lot of progress uh, with regards to actual lighting, my white box, because, you know, you can see it's not necessarily just one huge big... Uh, you know this flooring piece now now i've actually placed down big walls ceilings and so on and you can also see that half of my main room here actually has uh static meshes inside of this you can see i've got loads and loads of little objects like flooring pieces barrels crates support pillars walls and so on and so forth so before i actually go in on uh go into explaining how to uh place a uh, static mesh I'm going to be going over what exactly a static mesh is so a static mesh is essentially a type of geometry or an object uh, this usually won't have bones and things like that this is just going to be sort of a, a static mesh something that won't change its form or shape uh, unless it's been animated but with animations you need like skeletal meshes but you know it's essentially just static and the actual size and proportions and stuff like that of your objects won't change these will usually be props for example you will ha have things like flooring pieces stairs barrels crates walls and so on and so forth these objects are usually used around and in uh, synergy with your white box so as i said in my previous video you're actually going to be adding more complex geometry around that uh, white box and that complex geometry is actually static meshes and you can see i've begun to do that uh with placing walls around the geometry I've started placing floor around the geometry and uh, I've also started adding in covers and stuff like that as I have in my lovely level plan that I have somewhere which I'm actually going to go ahead and bring up now uh, I don't know why I don't have it up at the moment but you know you'll see that I've been pretty much sticking to my level plan and uh, working around my white box so hopefully now you should understand exactly what a static mesh is and that it's just essentially type of more complex static uh, geometry so how do you place a, a, um, a static mesh and where do you find one so firstly to find a static mesh just head over to the content browser where pretty much all uh, types of actors are stored and go ahead and uh, select the static meshes tab in the uh, little favorites list that you have here and you can see we actually have tons and tons there's probably hundreds of different static meshes that you can actually play around with and to actually bring these into your scene is really really simple for example if i find one i like for example what do i want you know what this little uh these little storage tanks look pretty handy and I can uh, actually bring those into my scene by simply dragging and dropping them in. So let me just do that again. I'm going to make sure it's all selected. You'll see this little yellow ring around it and I can just drag it over and it will place it exactly where I left that off. It's pretty simple. However, you may want to uh, place your static meshes in different forms. For example, if you have this selected, you can right click and you'll see we have a bunch of different options for what our static mesh is. For example, I can make it a standard static mesh, I can make it a rigid body, I can make it an interpactor, and so on and so forth. All of these have different meanings. For example, a UT rigid body is going to be something that has uh, that has physics applied to it, so if you shoot it, it will, uh, it will then change itself based on that for example it's going to move away because you shot it or something uh, like that or an interpactor is something which can actually be moved inside of matinee or unreal script or whatever but anyway you know the main one we're going to be working with is static mesh so you know just right click and uh, press add static mesh and it will be added into your scene keep in mind you can actually modify these further using the transformation tools as you can with pretty much everything else so I can move this about pretty simple I can rotate it and uh, I can also 
uh, scale it up and down. And you can also see that I've actually taken use of uh, rotating these little objects that I have here to turn them into uh, little, little support pillar things. And this sort of gives me that sense of modularity and allows me to use them for more than just one purpose. For example, you know, I don't have many other examples, but I could probably use these storage tanks for something else. You can see a pretty good example of uh, how the uh, Epic Games actually use their stuff in uh, in really, really good modularity with their DM deck map, which I'm going to show you now, if I can find it. Jeez, uh, it's been a really long time since I've worked with the... Uh, the UDK file structure inside of it for content and so forth because you know I, I like to keep it nice and intuitive and organized on uh, in a way that's just a personal preference but over here you can see I have things like well they have things like huge pipes uh, you know they've got things like this gigantic generator coming through the the wall here for some reason they've got things like uh, it looks, this looks like a bottle cap it's not they've got a uh, you know uh, they pretty much just re reuse things so that it looks like it makes place. For example, we've got an upside upside down generator. You wouldn't usually do that, but it works really, really, really well for them. And uh, I'm not necessarily going to mock them for it, but you know, oh hey, let's see if we can find one more, uh, slightly more apparent uh, example of what they've done uh, with that. So let's have a look. These. These are doors here. These aren't walls. These are actually doors. And, uh, you know, you've got crates and stuff like this in front of it. It's no way going to be a door. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty much how they've used it in modularity. And I advise you, uh, and I advise that you follow the same sort of technique and pattern of actually using them in modularity. But enough of, uh, the whole modularity thing. Let's get back into the level. If I can actually find it. And there we go. Keep in mind, uh, at the end of the series, I will be posting the link to this level of mine in the tutorial. And you can see I've got loads and loads of stuff just like this in uh, modularity. I place stuff wherever the hell I want to. So, you know, you might be thinking, so pretty much all you've told me today is what a static mesh is, how to drag one in and manipulate it, and, uh, and, and some basic concepts of modularity. What next? Well, next we actually have something uh, slightly more advanced. We actually have a, an editor dedicated to static meshes, so we can make sure that once they're imported, they uh, turn out correctly, we can add things like collision, we can change the materials, uh, the default materials, and so on and so forth. So to open that up, just go ahead and double click it, and uh, you'll get a little dialogue uh, that pops up a bit like this. And in the static mesh editor, you can actually uh, move around your 3D model, just your 3D model, uh, nothing else in uh, 3D space in a sort of perspective view to make sure everything looks all sweet and dandy. And based on this, I'm pretty sure it is. So let's go around, go over some of the different properties that we can actually play around with here. So I'm just going to quickly rotate my monitor because <laughs> I can't see a thing, uh, thanks to my lovely huge microphone. But uh, here we go. So I'm just going to be going over the uh, the most important properties that we actually have here. So, light map resolution. Uh, this is essentially the resolution of the light map. The light map. I pretty I'm pretty sure I explained it at once where the light is going to be on the object. The higher the light map resolution is, the better quality the lighting is going to be. At the moment, that's pretty high for a light map. It's 128, but you can turn this up. You can turn it down if you want to. Uh, you know, increase the graphics or uh, increase the performance or whatever. So we also have something called LOD instance ratio and LOD max range. These are essentially used to uh, define the range at which your object will change its level of detail. That's what LOD means, level of detail. Uh, this is for performance reasons. If you have a slightly lower uh, lower detail version of this, it will swap to that when you're far away and the player won't necessarily be able to uh, see that change and it genuinely helps uh, performance quite significantly. So that's pretty much what LOD is. You can change those values around. 
also inside of LOD info we actually have the default material which will be applied to the uh, static mesh by default you can see here we actually have the uh, material and I can go ahead and find that in the material editor by pressing that little uh, magnifying glass in it will find it's pretty useful and you can also select another material to be placed onto your onto your nice lovely uh, static mesh here for some reason for me at the moment it's not necessarily changing but if you are uh, but if you actually do it when you're adding in your material, it will change and it will update. So don't worry about that. So let's just go ahead and uh, go back into the static mesh editor because I somehow managed to close it. And I've also lost my mesh. Go me. So I'm just going to use this nice lovely barrel that I've got here. So let's open this up and uh, see what else we have with us. So next we have the um, collision. That's pretty important. So you can turn the collision view on by pressing this little sort of pink ring here and it will show you the uh, the collision boundaries of the object. Collision is essentially um, whether or not the player will be stopped or will collide with the object. So if I remove collision quickly, you'll see that I should be able to run directly through my lovely little barrels that I have here. So let's do that. I run straight through them and uh, everything works all fine and dandy however if I turn collision on obviously I'm going to collide with it and I'm not necessarily going to be going I'm not necessarily going to be able to go straight through it so you know let's just go ahead and add 6 DOP collision this is the most basic form of collision and and uh, and is usually just going to be a box however I can go up to something like 26 DOP collision and it will be slightly more complex we also have something called sphere simplified which is essentially a big sphere but isn't necessarily accurate if your object isn't a sphere and will have a uh, pieces of geometry which will be going outside of those boundaries which I'm pretty sure you which I'm pretty sure you can see quite clearly this barrel does but you know for something really basic and uh, you know just for feasibility testings or something this should work pretty well I use this on characters sometimes but you know we also have auto convex collision which allows us to go and define exactly how complex we want uh, our collision to be with depth whole vertices and splits so if I press apply with all up you can see this is the most accurate type of collision because it goes around all those little bevels and all that good stuff over here but you know every, that should be everything you need to know about collision and one last thing is the UV uh, map uh, the UV channel sometimes you might have multiple UV channels on, on your static mesh itself and uh, if you have the incorrect channel selected sometimes the material might come out the lighting might get screwed up uh, sorry, the material might not come out right, the uh, the lighting will get screwed up, so you can change it here using the uh, the light map coordinate index, and uh, you can actually view the UV channel here, and uh, then just compensate for whatever the right one is, and uh, place it in your index. So, this should be pretty much everything you need to know for the basics of the static mesh editor. Keep in mind, I'm going to be going over some of the other different options in here. For example, we have the fracture tool. I'm, tool, I'm actually going to be making a dedicated tutorial to this. But this should be everything you need to know about the static mesh editor for now. So, thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the next video in which I'll be showing you how to import your very own static meshes. So, I will see you next time. Goodbye.